Stun weapons. What are they? Why do they exist? And how do they help me in Barrett Trauma? First off for this guide, we're going to be looking at stun weapons. As a quick recap for afflictions, stun can be applied to targets for a maximum of strength 30. This naturally decays at one strength per second. This means that each stun strength equals one second stunned, with a maximum stun only ever being 30 seconds per entity. With that in mind, let's take a look at the weapons that can stun characters and monsters in the game. There are four core stun weapons that's primary focus is to inflict stun. These are grenades, stun guns, batons, and 40mm stun grenades. First off, we need to talk about special talents from the security officer. The first is the beat cop talent under the warden tree. This increases your stun strength by 25%. The second is the gunsmith talent under the soldier tree. This will allow you to create the masterwork variations of weapons in the game. With that in mind, let's look at the masterwork stun baton. They provide 30% increase to attack speed, which means your character can stun targets faster. Attack speed is an important factor when looking at the stun batons, as you need to hit the target multiple multiple times in order to unload a full stun to a target. Before a full stun is applied to a target, each hit only applies a small stun for 0.15 seconds. In addition to the stun affliction, a hidden affliction called incremental stun is also applied. Incremental stun will apply a stun for 10 seconds when it reaches strength 100, but it also decays at 5 strength per second. Incremental stun is provided and affected by the type of batteries you use. The standard battery cells are the most common ones you find in electrical items. These will require you to hit a target three times in quick succession, and on the third hit, the baton will provide a total incremental stun for up to strength 120. The next type of battery is the Fulgarium variant. These require you to only hit the target two times that will then provide an incremental stun of up to strength 110. The standard battery cells last a respective 4 hits before they're fully depleted, and the Fulgarium variants will last 6. You can extend their usage with the new quality system and masterwork batteries. These are available from the electrical engineer with the talent electrochemist under the electrician tree. Now with the masterwork quality batteries, you get 6 with the standard battery and 8 with the Fulgarium variant meaning that one baton with the Masterwork Fulgarian battery can stun three targets consecutively before needing to be recharged. As a special mention here, stun batons can be dual wielded, meaning two batons with Fulgarian batteries can stun a target instantaneously. For a security officer who has the beat cop talent, the incremental strength for the regular battery increases to 50 and it increases to 69 for the Fulgarian variant. Moving on to the next weapon, we have the stun gun. These are projectile weapons that are loaded with stun darts. The regular stun dart has another hidden affliction called progressive stun. Essentially, this is a delayed stun as it grows in strength from 0 to 100, increasing its strength by 10 every second. At strength 100, it applies the affliction incremental stun for strength 100. This knocks out a target by applying a regular stun for 10 seconds. If you have a security off on board with the skill by the book under the warden tree, you get access to the new Fulgarium stun darts. These darts apply stun in different ways. The new Fulgarium darts do not have incremental or progressive stun, and instead provide an immediate stun for strength 6 or 6 seconds. So, as a clear difference between the ammunition variants, one provides a delayed stun and the other an immediate stun. Each stun gun can be loaded with a maximum of two darts at a time, but as stun guns can also be dual wielded, this means you can sacrifice two inventory slots for two guns with four darts. Stun guns are also affected by the quality system, and masterwork stun guns can increase the effectiveness of stuns by 30%. Looking at a stun potential, a security officer with the beat cop talent, two masterwork stun guns, one loaded with regular stun darts and the other with Fulgarium darts, we will see the initial put down of a target from 
9.3 seconds from the Fulgarium dart, followed by another put down after a 10 second delay for 10 seconds. Essentially meaning a stun dart time of almost 20 seconds consecutively. Moving on, we have the stun grenade. These are thrown explosive devices that can be dual wielded, meaning you can throw two at a time. The new masterwork quality comes from the mechanical engineer with the talent demolitions expert under the pioneer tree. These masterwork qualities provide 30% increase to damage and blast radius. The base damage for these causes 6.5 explosive damage and stuns the target for strength 32.5. With the security officer and that 25% increase from the beat cop talent, we see that stun increase to 40.6, making it the strongest instant stun weapon currently in the game. Now, at this point, you may be wondering how is it possible to apply strength 40.6 when the maximum strength is only 30. Well, this is because there are character talents, medicines, and monster resistances that reduce the stun strength applied against them. For example, if a character has the new combat stimulant buff applied, they receive 50% resistance to the stun affliction, meaning that 40.6 is now only 20.3. As an additional mention, Hypozine and Methamphetamine will reduce the stun affliction by 22.5 and 27 respectively over 30 seconds. And if you're looking for gear, the Safety Harness, unlocked by the Mechanical Engineer with the talent Safety First, will reduce incoming stun by 75%. So just because you have a high stun weapon doesn't mean your target will stay down for long if they have good stun resistances. Finally, we have the 40mm stun grenade. This is a projectile that can only be fired from a grenade launcher. Currently, this projectile could be fired the furthest in the game and works well outside the submarine. It causes explosive damage for strength 5 and causes stun for strength 15 in a radius of 3 meters. The major drawback of using this is the requirement for the grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is a heavy weapon that cannot be carried in an inventory slot, but we will cover more about heavy weapons later on in this series. As a final special mention for this section, we also have the incendium grenade, as this does stun damage for up to 8 seconds. The major drawback being they do a high amount of burn damage, so they won't be your go-to weapon for stun. However, if you're outside the submarine or in a flooded environment, these can be a good choice if you need to stun and are lacking other alternatives. Although, do be warned if used in an area with oxygen, fires are one of the most dangerous environmental hazards in the game. With the stun weapons out of the way, I thought it would be a good time to also cover why stun plays an important role in the game. Security officers have a talent point under the Warden Tree called By the Book. This requires you to capture up to two live prisoners and finish a mission with them on your submarine. Doing so will add 400 experience points to each crew member and 2,500 marks to the submarine. This is a huge boost to talent points and makes capturing prisoners well worth it. However, capturing live prisoners is not without its challenges. The stun affliction only lasts for a maximum of 30 seconds, which is not enough time to clear an entire pirate submarine or outpost. As a note on handcuffs, you will need to grab a stun target, move handcuffs into their inventory, and then click the blank bar above the handcuffs so they turn green. Once a target has been cuffed, quickly move on to the next target and get ready with additional stun guns or batons if required. Currently, one of the easiest tactics is to use stun grenades to put down targets, then move in quickly applying handcuffs, following up with paralyzant to keep the prisoners subdued. Remember, you only get bonuses for two captured prisoners, so it's up to you if you choose to stun more. Once you are ready to transport your prisoners to your ship, make sure they have a diving suit with enough oxygen equipped and begin to drag them out. If you don't have the medic skill fireman's carry under the medic tree or from an endocrine booster, you're going to need to keep stunning the target for easy transport. This can be done with whatever stun weapon you have on hand. Once back on your submarine, you can complete the mission and claim your reward. As a special note here, if you're doing this on a solo campaign, make sure there's no AI on the turrets. 
Now you should have a good understanding of what role stun plays in the game and the best ways to get the most stun time against targets. As a boring disclaimer, Barotrauma is still in early access and everything is subject to change. This video may be out of date depending on when you view it. That's all from me. Make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Before the outro video, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters. You mean the world to me and allow me to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you. Na, na, na.